my people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord where is your camp leader going to be during this time is what I want to know verse 46 unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land a rumor shall come both come one year and after that and another shall a rumor come a rumor and violence in the land ruler against ruler now we've heard a rumor from the Lord in Obadiah that's what this is talking about therefore behold the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her and that rumor is you know everybody coming against her and shooting those arrows it's coming is what he's saying you're hearing a rumor uh, unless your heart faint for the rumor that shall be heard because that rumor is that arrows are going to be going to be shot into this place and you got to make sure that you are on that road out of here before it comes right because he's going to do judgment and upon her graven images and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for babylon for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north see that's when the missiles are going to come and you got to be make sure that when those rumors start coming that the scripture talks about in obadiah that there's an, a, a messenger sent among the heathen saying let's rise up against her in battle because the they going to the heathen are going to see and support us along the way once they see the lord is with us and we're going to let them know go ahead and shoot your arrows into her this is the rumor that's in obadiah now let me real quick get obadiah one because something's telling me that i need to show that we have heard a rumor from the lord an ambassador is sent among the heathen arise ye let us rise up against her in battle that ambassador that is sent among the heathen is to the medes because the medes are the ones who finally do right from the north country Actually, uh now let's go and i'm going to show you let's go get in one tab right second Esdras. Uh, second chapter. All right, this is uh, second, second Ezra's two. It says in verse 24 Abide still, O my people. Slaki. Abide still, O my people. And take thy rest for thy quietness still coming. We got to enter into his rest, right? We got to enter into his rest. That means we don't work. We don't buy. We don't sell. We don't work. That's the tenets of the Sabbath. That means we don't take this devil's mark. Nourish thy children, O thou good nurse. Establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. This is the 144,000, the servants that he has given them. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness come, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. Why? Because we're going to have spiritual power. <laughs> okay, and we're going to have a covering at that time. We're going to be given two wings to be kept from the face of the serpent where we can be protected. Right? When you look at it in uh, the book of Isaiah, right? Let's look at it in Isaiah 4. Right. This is an infamous scripture in the nation of Israel. It's got to be brought out because it's the truth. All right. All right. This is Isaiah four. And one in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying we'll eat our own bread and wear our own apparel because the food in the raiment is what a man has to make sure is fair 
If he takes multiple wives, this is according to the law, right? If he take another wife, her food and her and her raiment, he shall not diminish the first wife, right? Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped, escaped of Israel. You see that? And it should come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies. What is her assemblies? That's the whole picture of everything with the, the Holy of Holies, which is the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from from God, which is the church of Philadelphia or the 144,000. They are the high priest of the king of kings, right? They're the highest under Yahweh, his wife, right? And then that inner court, right? And then the ones cleaving to us, which is the assemblies that are assembled unto us. A cloud of smoke by day and a shining of flame of fire by night. For upon all the good shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and a covert from the storm and from the rain. So you see that, that there's a covert. Now you go look and get the book of Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, right? Let's go get that. Oops. Isaiah, the 32nd chapter. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. You see that? That's Yahweh Shai and his elect or his bride. And a man shall be a hiding place. This is the one third in verse two from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place. What dry place? In the wilderness, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Now let's stop right there and go get Isaiah. Right? I told y'all we're gonna get a lot of scriptures. I'm gonna show you scriptures to paint the picture. We're not gonna do no artful, you know, rendition, and which is cool and everything, but you know, give me the word. This is Isaiah the thirteenth chapter, right? Uh, what verse am I looking for? Twelve. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. You see that? And we're gonna get this chapter right here too, because you can see that the Lord said that what up here at the top that he commanded his sanctified ones and called his mighty ones right here. This verse three right here is speaking of the the, the house of David or, or the feeble among them being like David and the house of David being like God. That's what this is talking about, right? As a great people, all right? So when you see Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, making a man like fine gold and you see here, uh, that a king shall reign in righteousness and princes rule in judgment and a man shall be a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land and as the eyes of them that see shall not be dim and the ears of them to hear shall hearken see these are people that can hear and see okay they got eyes to see and ears to hear the heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge and the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall no more be called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. And right now in this world, the liberal or the left-hand side is vile, but that's supposed to be freedom. We're going to take that back, just like the rainbow and all the rest of the stupid stuff that they got in reverse down here, right? 
For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord, and to make empty the soul of the hungry. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fall. The instruments also of the churl are evil, and we know what those instruments are. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, with lying words, even when the needy speak aright. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled. We got three and a half years to go. You women are going to have to get in line. The vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Because all this nation is coming down. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. Why? Because the palaces shall be forsaken and the multitude of the city shall be left, and the forts and the towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, because this place is fixing to be ravaged. And the women are going to be ravaged in it. We read it in Zechariah, the 14th chapter. When they come into the city, the houses are going to be rifled and the women ravaged. It's coming. Until, 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 let's get it. The spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field because the men who are gonna judge the rest of the earth, the 144 along with that one third that is brought back into the wilderness, into the land of our people, this is where judgment is gonna sit. See that? And the work of righteousness shall be peace because they're going to force peace on the earth and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. When it shall, when it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that send forth hither the feet of the ox and the ass. Those are the people who are gonna sow seed, who like, like I said, it's gonna be time for us to now be judged based on our talents and what we do with the information that we have from now into the end of this thing on bringing the order that the Lord wants on earth as it is in heaven through the power of attorney of those men that are gonna be teaching for us to do this. And the nations that agree and cleave, the Lord said, leave your widows and your, and your children to us. They're gonna serve us in the land to eat them. We read the scripture, right? So you see that Isaiah, and this is showing the covering that I wanted to show y'all, that there's gonna be a covering in Isaiah 32, the wilderness shall be a fruitful field. In Isaiah the fourth chapter, there's going to be a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day as a protection. And the Lord is going to use that one third to protect the people in the wilderness, along with the lamb's wife, who will be following the footsteps of the flock, just like Yahweh Shai followed our forefathers in the wilderness the last time. And we read that in the Song of Solomon. You had to go back to the beginning of this lesson because we've been pulling precepts for I don't know how long now. I only want to click off the scriptures to go look at it. I just want to keep moving. Um, who is in second Ezra's? As for my servants whom I've given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I require them from among thy number. The Lord is going to snatch the 144, the servants that he's given them. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble in heaven is come, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you're going to be merry and have abundance. We read that abundance in Isaiah 60. The heathen shall envy thee. Uh-oh. It's a lot. 
The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith the Lord. Right? Remember thy children that sleep, for I will bring them out of the sides of the earth, because some of them, some of the people along the way are going to be killed. But remember the ones that sleep. The Lord said the dead will rise, right? He will bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. Embrace thy children until I come and show mercy unto them, for my wells run over and my grace shall not fail. I, Ezra, received the charge of the Lord on Mount Oreb, that I should go into Israel. But when I came to him, they set me at naught, and they despised the commandment of the Lord. This is how the nation does the true prophets of the Lord. They despise them. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world and this heathen is referring to not only the nation of israel that are in a heathen state of mind but also the heathen too because all things are going to flow into him they will be blessed that's why the scripture says in abraham all the families of the earth will be blessed because we are the salt of the earth we are seasoning the rest of the nation we are to Show them and teach them how to worship our power. And they, they're going to come up year by year to do so, right? Be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my Savior openly. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad and give thanks unto him that has led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up, stand, behold the number of those to be sealed in the feast of the Lord. And that number, that feet, that that those that, that are able to come to the actual supper is without number, the scripture says, right? Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received the glorious garments of the Lord. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Now that number is the 144,000. The number you can't number is the great number, the great a multitude that no man can number. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. I, Ezra, saw upon Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them was a, a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted. And I, and I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, what are these? And he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high God. And now are they crowned and received palms. Then I said, angel, what young person is this that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the most high God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. And that's not just the name Yahweh. This is that power of attorney, the chain of command from Yahweh down to Yahawashai, down to his apostles who were the foundation of the temple and to the 144,000, the house of David, the, the church of Philadelphia, those men that will preach for a thousand, that 1260 days, the two witnesses he gives power to and the ones that believe on them through their word that also receive the power because of it, right? We went over all of that. That chain of command, the ones that stood so stiffly for that. Not for your local camp. Then the angel said to me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God thou hast seen. And that's what I'm here to do because I've seen it and I can show you it. These men are hiding it. Let's look at 2 Ezra 13. 
right? We're going to show. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea and it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld and lo, that that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld and lo, he engraved himself a great mountain, a great mountain. That's that mountain in Revelation 21 and 2. That's that mountain that hit the foot of the image in Daniel, the second chapter, right? This is that mountain that's in the book of Micah, the fourth chapter. It's above all the other mountains. This is that mountain in Revelation, the 14th chapter, that the 144,000 was standing up on with the Lamb. This is the Lamb's wife, as it is written in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Revelation. Let's go look at it side by side. 21. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, right? Which had the seven trumpets. I skipped it. So like you. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues. All right. Not the trumpet. So like you. And talk with me saying, come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the most high God. This is that mountain. The holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of out, coming down from the most high God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Back in Revelation three, the church of Philadelphia. And in verse seven. Or let's look at verse 12. He did overcome it, would I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I'll write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. That's that mountain. That's the mountain. Right here back in Second Ezra, but I beheld, and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue and were sore afraid, yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But I saw, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it has been a blast of fire. And out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. Now look at that. We're going to look at that. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude. Which was prepared to fight. And burned them up every one. So that upon a sudden of, a sum of an innumerable multitude. Nothing was to be perceived but only dust and the smell of smoke. And when I saw this, I was afraid. Now let's stop right there, right? And just let me mark that. Bring my little thing back, because I think y'all, I had y'all messed up a little bit. All right, now it's back in place. All right. It's locked in. So now let's get a preset. Right. For this fire. He said all he did was bring that fire on him. Right. Let's look at it. This revelation. Chapter Revelation, chapter 11. 
This is the two prophets. If any man would hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. Right? This is the 144,000 spoken of here in Revelation 11. Right? Let's get another precept on that fire. It's the book of Joel. All right? Because the book of Joel. Uh, what you're going to see, the second chapter, right? A fire devoureth before them, right? Joel, the second chapter, is the 144,000 doing damage to this place. When you look in Revelation 11, it says if any, anybody heard some fire proceeds out of their mouth. When we go back over here to Second Ezra, it says that he didn't lift up no kind of sword or instrument of war, but he sent out of his mouth that has been a blast of fire. Just like Yahushai, <coughs> these men are just like him. They when they when they see him, they're going to be just like him. They're going to be as the angel of the Lord before them. He that is feeble shall be as David. The house of David, which is the church of Philadelphia, which is the Lamb's wife, shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. That's Zechariah 12, right? Uh, Zechariah 12 and 8, again, right? As the angel of the Lord before them. The same thing in the book of um, Revelation 21 and about the 17th verse, right? And he measured the wall and 144 cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. That is of the angel. This is as the angel of the Lord before them, right? In Zechariah 12 and 8. As in Revelation, or I'm sorry, that's fire proceeding out of his mouth. As in Zechariah, um, we see that both of those precepts are, are bringing that out. As the angel of the Lord before them there. And in Revelation 21, as of the angel, the 144,000. You see? So when we read here in Joel that a fire devoured before them, this is the 144,000. This is him carving out that great mountain and flying upon it. And then what? He comes back down with his men and damages this place. And after I saw that same man come down from the mountain and call another peaceful multitude. Now, this is interesting. Let's check this out. Another peaceable multitude. And there came much people unto him. Some of them were, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Some of them brought of them that were offered. That's interesting. Remember that. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou should receive my prayer. Now, this second group of individuals right here, I want to show y'all something about them. He said some that were offered, right? It's the book of Isaiah. It's the book of Isaiah. Am I sought of them that asked not for me? Am I found of them that sought me not? I said, behold me, behold me to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all day, all the day unto a rebellious people, which walk in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. I spread out my hands to a rebellious people, right? A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, sacrificing gardens and burning incense upon altars of brick. 
which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments and eat swine flesh and the broth of abominable things that's in their vessels. Would say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but I will recompense, even recompense unto their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one say, destroy it not, for a blessing in it is in it. So will I do for my servants' sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, and in inheritor of my mountains and mine elect shall inherit it and my servants shall dwell there and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks and the valley of Accor, a place for the herds to lie down in for my people that have sought me and that that a core real quick i want to show y'all something with that Door of a core. Make sure I'm spelling it right first. A C H O R. A C O. A C H. Yeah, Valley of a core, door of hope. You see that? This is a location in the wilderness that the scriptures are speaking about that we're going to be brought back into. There's some images that I was looking at this when I was studying this. Um, or And you can look this up in your own time, but I was looking at some maps of the Holy Land, and I'm not bringing any of those kind of maps up right now in this search, of course, for some reason. But I was able to, once I start, and I may have got it with some different keywords, but you can research that door of a core, right? This is where it's talking about, if I can get a good map of it. All right. Anyway, you can look at that in your own time, <clears throat> but this is going to be the place in the wilderness that we're going to be um, according to scripture. Okay. Uh, where was I at? Revelation, fire proceeding out of their mouth, Joel 2, a fire devouring before them, right? We're going to come back to that. I was in Isaiah 65, that door of a core, a place for the herds to lie down in, for the my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain. <laughs> yeah, that prepare, that, that prepare a table for that troop and that furnish the drink offering to that number. Because of some wicked nigg niggas amongst us that the Lord said, yeah, you finna get it. Therefore, will I number you to the sword. The Lord is going to let them get it. And you shall all bow down to the slaughter. That's that, that's that, that, that guillotine is waiting. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spake, you did not hear. You did not hear what the spirit was saying to the seven churches. But did evil before mine eyes and did choose, you chose that wherein I delighted not. The Lord set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. And he also sent a hireling and he sent the right ones out there. 
He sent the right, the false prophets, and he sent the right prophets. He set that stumbling stone in Zion to see if you was going to choose in what he delighted, or if you was going to choose that he delighted not. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. And we read that in Revelation 21, where we saw that that was the new, that that holy city Jerusalem was coming down out of heaven. And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But, but ye shall, but, but be ye glad, Salakia, and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And Jerusalem, that new, that, that, that city, New Jerusalem, is the house of David. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. Right? And the voice of weeping shall be heard no more in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall no more hence be an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And what this is means right here, and I looked this up in the, just to give you all a little bit more understanding on that verse right there. Uh, you can look at the translations and it'll show you what it's saying. It says, never again will there be in it an infant who lives but just a few days. You know, like a child dying early like that as an infant. Or an old man who does not live out his years, the one who dies at a hundred will be thought to be a mere child. And the one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. So you see that gives you, when you look at the other translations on that, it gives you a better understanding than reading it in that language, you know, that we're reading it in here, King James. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build another inhabit, and they shall not plant another eat. For as the days of the tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the blessed of the, they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. See, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Just like I said before, before we even call, he's going to answer those people who are in that line of chain of command of his temple. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like a bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So we know that the serpent's meat is going to be to lick up the dust that was prophesied from the beginning back in the garden. And this is what's going to happen to the serpent today. They're going to have to come and be our servants in the kingdom. And they're not going to hurt nor destroy in all his holy mountain. All right, they're gonna be our servants and handmaids. All right, let's get the next ch chapter in Isaiah 66. Right, because I wanted to show you something specifically, but I couldn't find it in, in whether it's in 65 or 66. So I just figured we're gonna read both chapters anyway, because it's in my it's in my preset package for this. So it says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? 
And where is the place of my rest? And like I've been telling y'all this whole lesson, that house is the house of David. These are the men that the Lord is using as his power of attorney in the earth. For all those things that things have mine hand made and all those things have been, said the Lord. But to this man, will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. See, the Lord ain't dealing with the ones that's on top. that's all proud and, and doing like they're doing out here among these camps. I mean, especially the deacon. <laughs> Does this describe him poor and contrite and trembling at his word? Not at all. These men are, are the exact opposite of that. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. And he that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. And he that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. And he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their way, their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abomination. Because the, 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 and you see right here, it says hypocrisy rebuke, because that's the leaven of the Pharisees, hypocrisy. And these are the men that are, that are over us. Well, all their sacrifices is like they're doing this. An ox is like they killed a man. You come to bring him a lamb, it's like you cut a dog's neck. He's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking that. He's not with that. And I would, and I would choose their delusions. You see that? He said he would choose their delusions, right? And I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. And that's, what, that's how I feel, you know, when I have brought out these lessons on the churches, it's like nobody wants to hear it. Don't nobody want to answer. When I spake, they did not hear. And the scripture says to the seven churches, let he that hath an ear to hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that which in I delighted not. There it is with that choice again. There it is with that choice again. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out of for my name's sake. Said, let the Lord be glorified, but he. He shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. They shall be ashamed. All right. So it says he's going to choose their delusions, right? And we'll bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that have that cast you out for my name's sake. For what? For his name's sake. Said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. and They shall be ashamed. The noise of the voice from the city, the voice from the temple, the voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. What does that mean? That means she's going to give birth to the 144,000, right? Before she travailed, she brought forth. Because the first thing that happens is they're taken in the same hour, a great earthquake, right? And then the spiritual power comes. The remnant's not cut off. Only the, only the ones that need to be got are got, and the remnant are not cut off because the Lord is going to raise up a standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard against him, and that is spiritual power, right? So before she travailed, though, she brought forth that 144. It's like we read in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who have heard of such a thing? Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? In one day? 
or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children immediately. Look at that. <laughs> shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy power? No. Those men, the lamb's wife, his jewels that he made of, that he set her mind, the first to exit the matrix, the first fruits are going to be birthed. She's going to bring forth before she even travails. Just like we read in John, the 16th chapter, when he was speaking to him in parables about them going away with him, he said, when a woman, he brought the parable of the woman giving birth. If you've been watching this whole lesson, you remember that. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All ye that mourn for her. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations. That ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. You see, that's that that's that river living water, right? Then shall ye suck and you shall become shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. It's just like a mother with her children. He's talking about how. The Lord is going to raise up those men and they're going to comfort the children. Just like we read in Song of Solomon, he said, go by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy children by the shepherd's tents. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. Right. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice. And your bones shall flourish like an herb, of course, because those men are now nursing and following the flock and the spiritual power is there and they know they good now. Soon as this devil tries to run on our nation, the Lord's going to raise up that standard and open up the earth with that great earthquake and turn the whole thing on this devil's head. And all the heathen did help us. We're going to see here all the heathen is going to help us. Not all of them. But a lot of them go help us for behold, the Lord will come with what fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by a sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. And if you go to the seven churches and you look at what they're feeding them, things that are sacrificed to idols, there's no difference. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And what is that glory? That glory is going to be upon those men that he's really dealing with. And I will set up a sign among them and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, to pull and to lewd, to draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering. Remember, I said, remember that. Some were brought as an offering. Let's go back to second Ezra's now where we was at. Right. Verse 13, and there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, some of them were bound and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning and have counted me worthy that I should receive thy prayer 
Now show me the interpretation of the dream. And we're going to get back to the interpretation of the dream. But I wanted to show you back over here where we was. All right. In Isaiah. That wasn't it. In Isaiah right here. It says. It was set a sign among them and send those that escape of them unto the nations. Right. Because we're going to be it's going to be time to gather the other people to the isles of far off that haven't heard of the fame. Neither have seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles and they shall bring all your brethren who are bringing all our brethren, the Gentiles for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litterums and upon mules and upon swift beast to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith the Lord. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. So you're going to see that they're going to be helping us and bringing us into our place. Let's go get a precept on that right here in the book of Isaiah. The 60th chapter. Right. It says, rise, shine, for thy light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, right? So right down here, it's going to say. Let me go down a little bit. Who are these that fly as a cloud, right? Because some of us are going to have that kind of ability, right? And as dove to their windows. But the ones that don't, surely the owl shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. So you see that the, the, the sons of the stranger shall build up thy walls. They're going to bring your sons from afar, right? Same way we read back here in Isaiah the 66th chapter, he will set a sign among them and will send those that escape of the nation to Tarshish, to Tarshish, to Tarshish, and pull and lewd to draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that not have heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and litterans. These two precepts are connected. Isaiah the 66th chapter in the 20th verse, along with Isaiah 60, right? And the ninth verse and second Ezra's when it when it speaks of um second Ezra's, some coming back other ways. And we're gonna get we're gonna get to it. Show me the interpretation of the dream, for as I conceive in my own understanding, woe to them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe that are not left behind. So there's going to be a group that's going to be left behind, right? In Salakia. Somebody give me a one in the chat if you can hear me. Baba Kusha. Okay, good. I got you, uh, Zolio. Good, 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 good. Bet. Um, what I wanted to show you here to precept with that is those that other peaceable multitude that he gathered unto him afterward he saw the man come down from the mountain and call another peaceable multitude right that other peaceable multitude breakdown or understanding we're going to get that in verse 39 and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude now this is the angel interpreting with that other peaceable multitude those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanazar, king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go further into, into a further country, right, where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river for the most high then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. 
And though that country, there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, the same region is called Arsereth. Then dwelt they there until the latter time. And now, Salakia, Salakia, and now, when they shall begin to come, when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore, thou sawest the multitude with peace. But those that are left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. Because there's a group of people that were taken back into the land. And there was a group of people that took ships back. The Northern Kingdom who came over here by ships, the scripture prophesies they're going back by strips that the highest is going to stray the streams again and they're going to go back by ships. This is connected here with the precepts I'm showing you of the ships of Tarshish bringing our sons from afar in Isaiah 60. And these heathen going to bring our brethren as an offering out of all the nations and bringing them back into the land. And I will also take of them priests and for Levites, saith the Lord, because that's what we're going to be. We're going to be the high priest and the priest under there. You got the, the 144,000 and the one third. That's basically what this is saying, saith the Lord. And as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And that's that power of attorney. Your name is going to remain that I have given you through my son. Right. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Powerful, powerful, powerful. This is what it's going to look like. As soon as the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. And that's spiritual power. The hunters are going to come when the enemy comes in. The Lord is going to snatch his, his, his bride. He comes like a thief in the night. But if you're going to spoil a man's house, you got to bind the strong man first. And when he opens up that ground and swallows up the flood that comes after the woman and gives her wings. Who are these that flies the dove? To their windows the one third's going back into the land the bride is going before the bridal chambers and she's going to come back down with power and she's going to protect the ones that are feeble among us that are like david and those men are going to be as gods and the saints of the most high are going to rise up under that chain of command under his name that strong tower that tabernacle, that safety net, and they're going to be safe. They're going to be safe. That is the name. Now, <clears throat> there's one other thing I want to show. Just because this thing is already five hours, so we might as well... Uh, let me look at this comment board too. Uh -huh. Got somebody in here trying to. How can the Christian church be a church in Revelation when they believe in white Jesus not keeping the law and, and the Trinity as well as other things? That's what the brother's saying. Well, the brother would have to go check out the lesson on Thyatira. Thyatira is Christianity. 
right? Um, and a lot of our people are under that demonic spirit of Jezebel that has led them just like the Northern Kingdom to serve another God. We know the story of Jezebel and the 400 prophets of Baal and Elijah and the two different sacrifices that were made and how no fire came down on the sacrifice of Jezebel and the 400 prophets of Baal, but only that fire came down and consumed the, the sacrifice of Elijah, who represented the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel. But Jezebel is teaching our people in the church, in Christianity, brother, to serve another God. That's how. And if we don't wake them up, they're going to be thrown into a bed of great tribulation. That's what the scripture says for tired, tired. Y'all can check out that lesson. All right. That brother can check that lesson out. If you go to the website, brother, or you can go on Patreon and you can be a Patreon member and you can check out the seven church revelation there. Um, but one other thing I want to show y'all right quick. <laughs> So, Aki, let me take this brother's comment off screen, right? And let me go back to the scripts. Let me get Leviticus 16 chapter. All right. And let me get some of these other tabs off of here. What I want side by side, and I'm going to show you precept upon precept, right? All right. This is Leviticus 16. And then I got Leviticus 10. And in this one, I want numbers. About the 23rd chapter. Now, for a while, when I when I was dealing with the church of Pergamos, I asked the Lord because Balaam, you see here in Numbers 23 and 1, that Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars, right? And prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Now, the bullock and the ram are significant. Let's go look. Side by side. Let me just drag that right over here. And let's look at Leviticus 16. This is, you see at the top, the law of atonement. Now, we already pointed out that the church of Smyrna is that, you know, ones that don't keep the day of atonement. They're not atoning because they have idols in their hearts. And, of course, you can't atone for that with idols. We looked into where it said cut off, cut off a body part, behead in Leviticus 23, <coughs> Salakia. <coughs> we looked at Revelation 2 in the church of Smyrna, right, where it said it'd be beheaded, um, faithful 10 days, right? We looked in Revelation 20 and 4, where it said the word, actual word beheaded, that were beheaded for the witness, right? We also saw in Revelation 12 where the devil, after that woman was given two wings of a great eagle, then he ran and killed the ones who he had locked up in Revelation, the 12th chapter. The ones that kept the faith and, and kept the commandments would not take his mark. They had to give up their lives. There's going to be some, like he said, they offered on each one of those altars a bullock and a ram. So let's look at Reve uh, Leviticus 16 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Now, the history on this is the two sons of Aaron that offered before the Lord and died.
they offered strange fire. And then the scripture say that his word is like a fire. Right. Well, they offered strange fire on the altar and they were killed. The Lord killed them. These are the ones who are offering a strange fire before us today. These agents. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Which is upon the ark. This ark is just like Noah's ark. Back at the first destruction, the first death, right? This ark, just like that one, if you're in, on it, then you're going to be safe. If you're not, then you're not going to be. And it's interesting how the blood is sprinkled upon it seven times. We're going to get into it. Let me not spoil it. All right. Let me get into it. So the Lord told Moses to speak to Aaron, his brother, and said not to come into the holy place within the veil of the mercy seat which is upon the ark that he died not for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. He said, I'm coming to visit there and I don't want him there. Or if I come, if I decide to show up there and he's there, he's going to die. So tell him, don't come in there. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place. He said, this is how he come with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. There's that bullock and the ram. Pay attention. We read in Numbers that Balaam offered on each one of the places that he went. And I just went to Numbers 23. We could have went to Numbers 22 and, and followed it to, to 23 and to 24 to be able to see all those places that he went to. He offered seven offer, altars, a bullock and a ram on each. OK, he's a soothsayer. So he's trying to cast a spell over the nation of Israel. So then thus shall he come into the holy place with a bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And he shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. And he shall be girded, girded with a linen girdle and with the linen might, meet, miter. Well, you can call it Mitri, right? Mitri. Shall he be attired? These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for the burnt offering. All right. Now pay attention right here. Because him being clothed in white is the righteousness of the saints. We read that the bride had made herself ready and it was given to her to be clothed in white raiment, which is the righteousness of the saints. Aaron, the high priest, represent the hundred and forty four thousand. Keep this in mind. And it says that and Aaron shall offer his bullock for the sin offering, which is for himself. All right. So that bullock that he had was for himself and make atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats. Now watch this clearly. He going to take two goats and he going to present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. The one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. So he got these two goats up there and he about to flip a coin, basically. All right. Heads, you goat, you're going to be killed. Tails, you goat, you get to escape. One of them going to be a sacrifice for the Lord and the other one going to get to escape based on the lot that he's about to, to flip. So it says in verse seven again, and he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the cat congregation. That's also key, right, of the tabernacle. 
And Aaron shall cast lots upon the goats, the one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat which upon which the Lord's lot fell. So in other words, the one who the Lord gets to, to, to take as a burnt offering and offering for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him alive. They're going to be presented alive to make an atonement, the atonement. They're not going to be beheaded. They're going to be keeping the atonement. They're going to be presented alive. And then let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Y'all see that? All right. Now, when you look at Balaam in Numbers, we get to the 24th verse or chapter. He didn't go seek for enchantments like he did the other times, but he set his face toward the wilderness. You got to you got to look at these two things side by side. Balaam and what he did to make this thing happen to us or to put this enchantment on us. He set it up just like the Lord's instructions are in Leviticus in order to cast this spell. What I'm showing you right now is the details of the spell that he cast. The scapegoat that goes into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself in his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering for himself. And he shall take a censer full of the burning coals of the fire from the altar of the Lord, and in his handful of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Right? So you got a bullock for himself, a goat that the lot fell on to get killed and the goat that gets to escape, right? And then get this piece of fire from off the altar, right? Some coals off the altar and his hands full of the sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord and that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat. That is upon the testimony that he died not. And this is that protection that the scripture talks about, that cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, right? And he shall take of the blood of the bullock, the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. That's important because that's the direction of our land from where we are here in Babylon. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood of with his finger seven times. Just like his seven altars over here in Balaam. And a bullock and a ram on each one of them. He's supposed to sprinkle the blood on the on the mercy seat of that ark seven times. Do you understand? Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. Okay, because then it's time for that one to die. That is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So these are the men that are going to be killed. And you can see that blood splashing up against that ark, kind of like the, the, the ark when Noah was in it, the water splashing up against that ark. The symbology is impeccable in the way the Lord wrote this. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So you see the separation be between that. So shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation. You got a holy place and you got a congregation. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement into the holy place. Why? Because he represents the 144,000 that goes into the bridal chambers and the door is shut. 
And if the Lord shut that door, can't no man come in it. When the wise virgins go into the marriage chambers, the door is shut. In the church of Philadelphia, he said he's going to give them an open door that no man can shut. And if he shut it, no man can open it. He said that the ones that are lead them through the door are the shepherd of the sheep and they shall go no more out because they're going to live and dwell in the in, inside that holy place. This new Jerusalem, the capital city of our nation is the holy of holies. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. They are the first fruits that are offered to the Lord for the rest of us. Right. And because of their transgression and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation, which is the ones that's in the inner court that are of the one third that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out. And have made atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. So don't try to go in there until then or else. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it and shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat. Right. So you got the bullock, of the, the bullock and the goat and he shall put it upon the horns of the altar round about and he shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. This represents Israel. And when he have made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle and the congregation. So you got the holy place, the tabernacle and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. He shall bring the, the live goat. All right. So this is that scapegoat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel. And all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and he shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he had put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering. And the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people and the fat of the sin offering shall uh, offering shall he burn upon the altar. He shall let go the, the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water. So the one that let the scapegoat go shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought into the to make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. He that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. There's a lot of blood that has to be spilled and a lot of fire that has to be made. And this whole cleanup job that we see after this is the cleanup job that we are going to do for the Lord. The scapegoat into the wilderness, the ones that escape of it, all that's indicative. Verse 29. And this shall be a statute forever unto you that in the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month, the seventh month, the 10th day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. Whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you, you see. And that's going to, like I said before, there's. Israelites that's going to be uh, gathered that are scattered and there's also going to be heathens that are going to cleave to us. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. 
and it shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Speaking of the Day of Atonement, an annual atonement. You see that in big bold letters at the top. Forever, forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the in the priest office in the in, in his father's stead shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the sanct the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation and all and and, and this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make atonement for the children of israel for all their sins once a year as he did as the lord commanded moses so you when you see this bull and a ram right and that strange fire is offered first and those men being killed and you go over here and you look at the bullock and the ram the scapegoat whether you're sacrificed or whether you get to escape in numbers 24 and how he didn't go look for enchantments anymore, but set his face toward the wilderness. You see the spell that was cast and you see how the seven churches are all have an agent of Balaam over them, a Pergamus agent that are that are basically setting them up to either escape or to die. You either flee from these people. Because, you know, not the voice of strangers, but will flee from him because they're going to flee. They're going to flee. The scripture says that the hireling flees, but he cared because he cares not for the sheep in John 10. Down here in, in under Balaam in, in, in this chapter right here, Balak was mad at him. And he told him, I, I hired you, and Balak's angel was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hand together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse mine enemies. And behold, thou hast altogether blessed him these three times. Therefore, now flee thou into thy place. The hireling flees right here. In John the 10th chapter, the hireling flees. Right? You got to flee from them before they flee on you, before the Lord has this thing set up for the people to, to come and get right where's that at there it is the hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and he cares not for the sheep flee thou into thy place these men are going to flee the lord has set it up for you to either be the scapegoat and flee from that situation or to be a bullock it's a trap it's a stumbling stone and Balaam has set that bull and that ram up just like he followed what the law was supposed to do here. And this mercy seat, whether you're going to have mercy or not, whether you're going to be inside the ark or whether that's going to be your blood just sprinkled on the side of it. Depends on whether or not you come under the men that the Lord has given power of attorney from his name to his name down through Yahweh down to those men. These are the hunters that are coming. It's going to all begin with a great earthquake. Nobody of none of these camps are showing y'all these things in detail. So by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, I will. Because the spirit and the bride say come. Now, if you hear, if you have ears to hear what the spirit is saying, then the scripture says to you also, that you come, that you say come. Let's get that. If you can hear it, you need to be on the right side or else you finna get it with the rest of them. This is Revelation 22. All 
All right. So it says right here in verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come. Well, you know. <laughs> and let he that heareth say, come. You see that? Because if the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, and the bride, which is the 144,000, say come, and the people that are following Balaam, if they hear it, the ones that have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the seven churches, if they hear and now say come, then that right there sets up the link for whoever is a thirst, even of the heathen nations, to come and take of the water of life freely and get the blessing that comes from them blessing us just like the scripture says in matthew the 25th chapter right the first portion of this like i told y'all before is then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish are you a bullock or a ram the bullock are for the high priest. Aaron, Aaron had to sacrifice a bullock for himself. One of the rams was a scapegoat. The other one got killed, man. The scripture says here that five were wise and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said unto the wise, give us, give us of your oil, our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, no, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, went in with him to the marriage, the marriage inside this thing, right? And the door was shut. That's that door being shut. Afterward also came the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, right? But he answered, said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. The scripture says, many shall come to me in that day saying, haven't we prophesied in your name? And haven't we, you know, all this date, like they prophesied on the street corners and all this. And the Lord said, I don't know you. I don't know you. Watch, therefore, for you neither for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man. Now that's that's whether or not you of the hundred and forty-four that's going into the marriage, or whether you about to go through this hour of temptation. And the and the Lord is going to judge us by the the knowledge that He's given us for waking up to this truth. You've received it. You've been blessed by Balaam, even though he cursed, cursed us. He was set up to bless us anyway. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to follow Tahar all the way up to the FEMA camp? Or are you going to jump ship and flee from the hireling and use your talents to do something about setting up the house of David and the nations flowing into it? What well, is next set of parables here under the talents is going to show? For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who is called his servants. The servants are us and, and delivered unto them to his goods. That's us getting this knowledge. And to one, he gave five talents, another two and another one. And to every man, according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made up, uh, made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had the, received the two also gained another two. But he that received the one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. For after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides them five talents more. And he said unto him, well done. That's what you want to hear. Well done. Now, you wasn't a part of the 144 to go in, but now look at you. You done received it, you understand it, and you done a good job afterwards after you came out of that trance that Balaam had you in. You did a lot, you did a lot better. 
Some of them that just yeah, and, and you know, there's the, here come the two, right? He that also received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And their works do follow them, but they're going to be on the lower level. Some of them might have to give their lives, right? And his Lord said unto him, well done. Well done to you too, right? Because the dead going to rise first. So if they have to give up, if they won souls before they got cut off, then okay, the Lord's gonna gonna still give them uh, uh, that well done, but they're not gonna be of that number that have the powers and that are gonna be spreading this thing for that twelve hundred and sixty days. They're gonna be on a lower level, and the ones who you know of the Church of Thyatira who are teaching men to not keep the commandments. They're going to be on a low level. If you if you don't keep the commandments and teach men so, you're going to be the least. You're going to start seeing rank and order and structure based on what you know. So the Lord said to him, "Good, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter down to the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent, right? came and said, Lord, I knew thou were a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him which have the 10 talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I can just see it now, you know, uh, during this thing that's coming and us being judged by what we do with the talent that he's given us. Some people being ashamed. And he said, if you're ashamed of me before men, you'll be ashamed before my father. Scripture talked about some of them coming that were ashamed. We read it in Second Ezra. You don't want to be ashamed. You don't want to hide your talent. You don't want to. Uh, not be building this house like the Lord wants it built on earth as it is in heaven. You want him to say, well done. Well, you have to know who to follow and who not to. You have to know the judgments. You have to know the order to harvest. The Lord is judging us with that second parable right there as his servants, us. But then look here. Matthew 25, 31 on down, you see here that when the son of man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations. This everybody else, all the all the heathen nations. Right. And he shall separate the one from another as the shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the, set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And then shall the king say unto them that's on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, that's interesting that he calls these nations, all the nations, blessed, and that the kingdom was prepared from the foundation of the world. He says, why? Why is he why is he calling this when these are the heathen nations he's speaking to here? These are not you're going to see these are the ones on his right. Right. You're going to see. He said, because I was a hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. These are all the things that the heathen are going to be doing to the nation of Israel. Then shall the righteous answer him. He called him righteous. Answer him saying, Lord, when shall we saw thee a hungered and fed thee or gave thee drink, right? And when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came to thee? 
And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in so much as have you done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. The heathen are going to help us and be rewarded for it. Just like we saw the ships of Tarshish and them bringing his sons from afar. Isaiah 60 and also Isaiah 65, uh, 66, right? They're going to be bringing us stuff in Isaiah 60 with camels and, and the sheep and, and all these different flocks so we can eat. You see? Then, then he shall say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So these are the nations that followed Esau, Edom, and the devil and his angels all the way to the end. They stayed on his side. And we're speaking of the other nations. Why? For I was a hungered and you didn't bring no meat. You didn't bring no meat. In Isaiah 60, we see the nations brought food, but somebody ain't going to bring no meat and it was thirsty and didn't give no drink. Who are these people? These are the heathen. I was a stranger and you took me not in, naked and you clothed me not, sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them saying, verily I, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous and unto eternal life. Matthew, the 25th chapter covers the 144,000 or the wise virgins or the church of Philadelphia who went into the marriage. It shows the parable of him coming to judge us according to our works based on whether or not we do something about bringing this thing together like he wants it to. And he goes into the heathen that are going to help us do it and get it done because in Abraham shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And he'll bless those that bless us and curse those that curse us. And so the great commission, the true great commission, right, is about to begin. A lot of the camps will tell you Matthew, the 25th or 22nd chapter in the, in the ninth verse is speaking that we should go out into the highways and the byways. Right. And bid my people to the marriage. Right. You should be teaching on the street, brother. Right. But what does one through eight say? Yahweh Shai spoke to them by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. Who was his servants? The disciples. And they would not come. And again, he sent forth other servants. Who are these servants? Well, we're going to find out that these servants are the ones that are coming. The ones that are going to prophesy for that 1260 days, because we see here that the fatlings are killed and all things are ready to come to the marriage. He sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I prepared my dinner. My ox and fatlings are killed and all things are ready to come to the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Because if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready. And this, like I said before, this is that second set. The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Who are they which were bidden? The nation of Israel. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. You see that? Y'all have to understand that they're lying to you about these scriptures. They weren't worthy. So the Lord said, go gather everybody. So those servants went out to the highways and gathered together as many as they found. Watch this. Both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw their man that didn't have a wedding garment on. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> and he said to him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to his servants, then bind him hand and foot and cast him away and cast him into the outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I mean, you're not going to be able to slip into this thing like you just, you know, thinking you're going to slide in unawares. Ain't going to be no more of that. You see, Matthew, the 22nd chapter is going into that wedding. And how he bid them to the wedding and they weren't worthy. So they had to go out and get whoever. Another scripture they use, Luke. Watch this. Luke 14, 23 is what they use, right? And the Lord said unto the servant, go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to, to come in that my house may be filled, right? For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Who is that? Well, you got to go up from here. You can't just read that and let them tell you that this is you. This is the Lord telling you to go out to the streets with your 12 tribe sign and teach. No, that's not what this is talking about. Again, if you read up from there, the Lord sent his servants at supper time and said to them that were bidden come. Who are his servants? A certain man made a great supper and bed many and it's, and sent his servant at supper time. That supper time denotes the end. Come for all things are now ready. And they with all consent to begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground. They bought a lot of land down in Atlanta. They trying to make this their rest. I must needs go see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. And I pray thee have me excuse. Another said, I've married a wife and therefore cannot come. And whether you put in woman or job or, 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 or camp or camp leader or whoever before the Lord. You're going off. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house being angry said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done and thou hast commanded. Yet there is still room. There's still room, right? And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Now, that don't sound like the same rendition that y'all are getting from these camps about this supposed to be going out to the street. No. These are the last set of servants that are coming to prophesy. The great commission is fixing to take place and you're going to be judged on the, whether or not you buried your talent or whether or not you increased it. And the nations are going to be judged based on how they helped us to get all this to come into order underneath the Lord and his son and those men that he set up to teach them and whoever believes on him through their word will be saved. This is the marriage supper that we're calling everybody to. Even the animals, when you go into the book of Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, and you put it right next to the book of Joel 2, right? Let's go get Joel right quick. Two. <clears throat> Real quick in Joel 2, let me just show you the rendition of uh, what's going to happen here. You see that in, in, in Joel 2.27, and ye shall know I'm in the midst of Israel and that I'm the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed, right? Because now the Lord comes down and dwells with us at tabernacles, right? That's what this is talking about. That temple falling down in the, in the Lord's tabernacle being with men, right? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. 
and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. There it is again, the handmaids that are cleaving to us of the other nation and the servants. So those servants, which would be male or female of the other nations that are cleaving to us, the Lord said he's also going to pour out his spirit on them. You see, this is that final picture in Joel 2 of the hunters coming, of us being called out of here. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Go back and get numbers, the 10th chapter real quick, and look at that blowing of the trumpets and what those blowing of the trumpets mean. Go get numbers 10, and you'll see that it's for the journeying of the camps, right? And for the calling of the assembly. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. And when they and when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle. And if ye blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall ga gather themselves unto thee. That's the heads. Just like John said when he saw that open door in heaven and he heard a voice as a trumpet speaking with him and he was caught up into it. Just like the Church of Philadelphia, when they get that open door before them and you, they see in Revelation that they heard a voice like a trumpet and they ascended up into heaven into a cloud and their enemies beheld them in the same hour of that great earthquake. These are the calling of the heads of the thousands of Israel shall gather themselves unto thee. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. When you blow, blow the alarm the second time, then the camps that are on the south side shall take their journeys. So you see, the Lord is going to, going to gather us by the blowing of horns. Whether it's calling those 144 into that open door with that voice like a trumpet, or whether that's on the day, on the feast of trumpets, when the Lord sounds that horn and the dead in Christ rise, and 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 you see that 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 seventh what is that the seventh month the first day of the month the memorial blowing of trumpets back in Numbers the twenty third chapter in the twenty third verse, right? He's calling them away, the journeying of the camps, and for the gathering of the heads by horns. Now let's go back to Joel 2, because what I wanted to show you that this feast in Ezekiel 38, let's go down, Ezekiel 38. All right, and this is all about Gog and Magog, or that final war, and coincidentally, the Gog and Magog situation is not just about Russia. This is China. In some earlier versions of the Bible before the 1611 King James, it doesn't even say Gog and Magog. It says China and Mongolia. All right. So you have to understand this is Balak who's hired Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. You have to understand that Gog and Magog is a combination of China and Russia, of course, and Iran but China is the main culprit of this Gog and Magog situation. That's another thing that the, that the camps are not teaching you because they don't combine these things with the judgment of the seven churches and liken it unto Balak and Balaam being the king of the Moabites and the Edomite that's casting a spell over us by sitting on the heights and men that's selling out to him, right? To cast that stumbling block above us, over us. And cause us to eat things sacrificed to idols and to come out as the bullock that gets sacrificed instead of the scapegoat. So this is Ezekiel 38. And what I want to show you in this is that this is a, uh, a big feast, right? All the birds and the fowls of the air are going to come. And they're going to eat the remains, right? I think it's in the next chapter, actually. About Salaki Bokasha. I think it's in uh, the next chapter, actually. 39. Turn thee back, believe, but a sixth part, and I'll cause thee to come up from the north parts and bring upon the mountains of Israel. 
And I was smite the ball. And this that the north parts that it talked about the Medes coming from, right? Which is the land of Russia at this time, which you know we know Iran and Russia and China, which is you know under that spirit of Balak, who's got you know how much money we owe China right now, Babylon the Great. Why do you think the scripture says in Second Ezra sixteen, woe unto the Asia and Babylon both, right? I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and cause thy arrows to fall off thy right hand. And thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel and all thy bands and the people that's with thee. See, the people that's with thee. And I will give unto thee and give unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. And thou shalt fall upon the open field for I have spoken it, saith the Lord. And I will send a fire on Magog and upon them that dwell carelessly in the house. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Because this devil is going to try to come up against us after we flee back into our place one last time. One last time. The, 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 the Euphrates River is dried up so the kings of the east may come back over for this final battle along with Russia and China and, 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 and Iran, all these countries that's listed in Ezekiel 28 with uh, two ball, right, going into Turkey and, and, and all those countries that are lined up as we speak, okay? Ethiopia, Libya with them, right? Uh, and what are they coming for? To take a spoil, to take a prey, right? To take a spoil. Let me go down to that right here. Okay, in verse, e, let's start right here in verse 10. Thus saith the Lord your God, it shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought this devil is, right? Even though he done seen how we done did Babylon and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, right? To take a spoil and to take a prey. Why? Because we got a lot of gold and silver and the ships of Tarshish and all the nations coming to bring us all of our loot and everything. He coming to take a spoil and a prey, right? And to, and to, and to turn down hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land there goes the cattle and goods where's all this cattle and goods and stuff coming from we read the ships of Tarshish to bring your sons from afar the heathen are going to be helping us everything's going to flow into us this is all what's coming all right. When we look at this in Joel, you'll see the 144,000 even feeding, going by the footsteps of the flock and feeding thy children by the shepherd's tents. You see where you're blowing a trumpet in Zion and a sound of alarm in this holy mountain, letting all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord coming. See, that day of the Lord is different than the day of his wrath. We dealt with the day of his wrath for Babylon. This is the day of the Lord where he defeats Gog and Magog, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There have not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devour before them. And like we said in Revelation 11, if any man will hurt them, a fire proceeds out of their mouth. Just like we saw in Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. That he didn't lift up sword, but a fire came out of his mouth, right? And the land shall be as a garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. And we know the house of Joseph shall be a fire and the house of Jacob a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and Obadiah. And nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses and horsemen, so shall they run. And like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array now the camps will tell you this is missiles they don't want to give you no details about this being 144,000. the appearance of them is the appearance of horses and horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap 
like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his own on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And they shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall and shall climb up upon the houses, and they shall enter in the windows like a thief, because they're going to be gathering the people and bringing them, and they're going to be killing some of them. They're going to be doing business of the Lord, the hunters, pulling them out of the dens and the holes and the rocks, gathering up slaves or, or killing them, whether you discern them, whether they... You know, uh, just like the apostles, when the Lord appeared to them in that upper room after he rose and came through that door and he breathed on them and said, Shalom, and, and said, receive the spirit. He said, whoever sins you remit are remitted and whoever sins you retain are retained. And that's exactly what they did when they came down. They had power. That's the similitude of the bride coming down and doing that kind of judgment, like it says in Malachi 3 and 18. Then shall you return and discern between him that serveth the Lord and him that serveth the not. He will enter in the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The earth, the sun, the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your hearts and not your garments. Because a lot of them out here is real keen on dressing all nice and being all seen and all the rest of it. Right. The Lord said, rend your hearts and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. You can't come through a man. You got to turn to the Lord, your God, through Yahweh for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he would return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord, your God. That's what I wanted to show you. When we read in second Ezra, he said, that she was going to eat and ain't going to be nothing that the heathen could do about it to nurse thy children. Thou, thou uh, great nurse, right? Let me go back to second Ezra two, right? We're going to eat. Was it two and 24 abide still O my people and take thy rest for thy quietness. Come nurse thy children. O thou good nurse, establish their feet. As for the servants whom I've given thee, not one of them shall perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble in heaven is come, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. And the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be nothing, be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. You see? So we're going to eat. We're going to eat. Just like it says here in Joel 2, he will leave a blessing behind him, a meat offering. Just like it says in, in Ezekiel 38, that we come out of all the nation and we got cattle and goods in the midst of the land. This is the eating we're going to do. And the prophets, the hunters, the, the, the bride is going to be saying, come. And whoever here is going to say, come. This is what's going on that the camps are not showing y'all. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. That's the Feast of Trumpets. Sanctify a fast. That's the Feast of Atonement. Call a solemn assembly. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. These are the fulfillment of the last three feasts. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. 
Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore the heathen shall say, wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? The Lord shall be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I must send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you approach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the hinder sea and this and, and, and this and, and hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink going to come up. And his ill savor gonna come up. We just read it in and over here in Ezekiel 38. See, their rendition is that the chariot's gonna come right as the nukes hit. We're gonna get took back to the land. We're gonna live happily ever after. The end. Bullshit. Bullshit. The Lord said he would remove off from that army, and we was gonna be straight. Right? Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. You see that? Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he have given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with, with wine and oil. Look at that. Wheat and wine. The wheat is the one third that got gleaned from the tares. The wine come from the grapes of the heathens. And the oil, of course, is the truth. That's that anointing. And I will restore to you the years that the, the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. We just read about it. The Lord sent them against us, and then he turned around and sent the hunters against them. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know I'm in the midst of Israel, that I'm the Lord. Else, you shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and the handmaids in those days would I pour out my spirit. That's the ones that's cleaving to us. And I will show heavens and wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom he shall call. That's the 144 and the one third. Whoever the spirit and the bride and the ones that heard, which is this, the Holy Spirit, the Church of Philadelphia, which is Mount Zion and the remnant, which is them that believe on him through their word. Is that remnant whom the Lord shall call? The whole structure includes everybody. And we got to understand that. If you are the ones that can hear, <laughs> if you are a wise, a wise virgin, or if you are a servant that's going to increase his talents, you have to understand these things. You have to understand first and foremost that there's men over us that don't mean us any good. They tried to mean us bad, but the Lord turned it to our good. And now that we've learned what we've learned, I say, abandon them, abandon them, flee. The Lord is going to send the hunters, but first he's going to let that sword come and, our, and, 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 and we're going to be divided in the midst of them. One third and two third. But as for 
the ones that the Lord is going to look out for that remnant, the scripture says, for Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. You see that? And all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. And we read it in Revelation, the 19th chapter. He's going to write on them the name of his God, the name of the city of his God, which is New Jerusalem, and Yahawashai's new name, because a man that takes a wife, she takes on his name. And when that name is written on his thigh, King of King and Lord of Lords. That name is the power of attorney that comes all the way down the chain of command. Not from Elder Apostle Tahar on down. It's from Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai and the house of David on down. And thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. And thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be termed more termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah, and thy land Beulah, which, which basically means married. Let's look at that real quick. Hepzibah. Right? There's going to be a lot of marriage going on in, in the wilderness. When seven women take hold of one man and sex is marriage, it's going to be a lot of marriage happening in the wilderness. Thy land shall be married. So Hepzibah means my delight is in her. Right? My delight is in her. Let's look at the uh, root word real quick. Delight, pleasure. Look at that. All right, let's go back. Hepzibah in thy land, right? The Lord has a delight in her, and the land shall be called Beulah, which is to marry rule over possess own to marry be lord husband over to rule over to be married see that the lord delights in her and, and we shall be married and it's going to be like i said it's going to be a lot of marriage going on in the wilderness not only is it going to be the the lamb and his wife getting married but when he returns from the wedding in, in the marriage supper with all of our goods and all of our animals and all the stuff we're going to have and, 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 every, and all, all the nations that are surrounding us and everything flowing into us, everything we have, we're going to not be turned forsaken. We're going, our land is going to be married. It's going to be a great marriage that takes place, a great linking up of the most high to his son, to those men, to those men that are believed on, on him through those men and all the women that are going to be assigned to them to help us to do what we do from this point on forever. So the scripture says here, and I don't know exactly where I was. You, uh, where's it at? So thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be termed any more desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, which is Hepzibah, and thy land shall be married, which is Beulah, right? For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. That's so beautiful. It's showing all these marriages that are going to be taking place. The, whether it's the men who have given up sons or daughters or wives or lands and receive a hundredfold for us. So now they got a hundred sons and a hundred wives and a hundred land. All this is going to happen just like the Lord said it would. The Lord said, he that is 
a, 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 a little among them. They're going to be like a, 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 what is it? And I'm roughly paraphrasing it. Uh, he that is the least of them shall become a city or whatever, and the greatest will be a strong nation. And I'm roughly paraphrasing that. So like you, I can search it and get it if I need to. But let's look at this. As for a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoice over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest. Till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And that Jerusalem is the holy city. That is that new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. That is the Lamb's wife. That is the gods of the earth that are going to be just like Yahweh. And the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more. Give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out of the stone. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord have proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Amen. So with that, brothers and sisters, I hope that y'all were thoroughly edified who stayed in here this long to watch this lesson, man, uh, which has been a full six hours and 21 minutes right now. Uh, I started this live right at eight o'clock my time. That's a lot of scriptures. I did it like this so I could take this clip and cut little pieces of it and redistribute it. And I think anybody who sees it should do the same because it's not going out there. We need to send laborers into the harvest. Pray that the Lord send laborers. I pray that you brothers and sisters who have received this when the scripture says the spirit and the bride say come and he that heareth say come. I pray now y'all start who have who can hear that you start saying come out of these camps and go straight to the Lord through the men of the Lord that he's really dealing with. Not these men. These are not them. Don't stumble at that stumbling stone and try to earn your righteousness by keeping the law. Don't try to climb up another way. Don't follow a false prophet because the reward of that false prophet will be unto him and unto the one that follows him. Realize these are the men that are in the book of Jude that were preordained to this condemnation. These are the false prophets that shall rise in Matthew the seventh chapter. These are the hirelings in John the tenth chapter. These are of Balaam. They're sitting where Satan sits on the heights. Flee from the stranger, the voice of the stranger. And hopefully you will hear the Lord's voice through the men who are really showing you what is to come. What exactly is going to take place? There's a great earthquake coming. The Church of Philadelphia is going to be snatched through that open door. The same hour that great earthquake is going to take place. The Lord's going to let this devil get a certain amount of us and then open that ground up and raise up a standard and give spiritual power to the remnant. And every man will receive 
of that talent according to his several ability. What you do with it, the Lord will come and reckon and judge. I pray that the brothers and sisters that can hear will take these videos that whether it be the seven churches, go to the website, understand the judgments, look at some of the other lessons I've taught on the order of the harvest. And, you know, we all, like the scripture says in Micah, we have to arise and contend. This is how the saints are going to take the kingdom. Y'all need to read the whole book of Micah. This whole book is about everything I'm talking about. Scripture says, hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise and contend thou before the mountains and let the hear, hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy. And be, be strong foundations of the earth. And ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Judgment must begin with us first. O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I have sent before thee Moses and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak and king of Moab consulted and what Balaam, the son of Beor, the son of Beor, the Edomite that we looked up, answered him from Shittim to Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. The Lord said, in order to know righteousness, you have to consider this. Balak and Balaam. We got to rise and contend. We have to come out from among, we have to flee from the hireling. So with that, I hope you brothers and sisters will adhere to that and flee. It's almost time. You have to get out of there before this devil starts making his move and repent and come back to the Lord. With that, I say Shalom.